All right, let's look at uh, hypertension. Uh, so hypertension is high blood pressure. So you're typically hypertensive uh, if you're, you know, 140 over 90. All right. So prolonged hypertension is a major cause of heart failure, vascular disease, renal failure, and stroke. Uh, basically because it kind of damages your blood vessels and by damaging your blood vessels you can get a blood clot on those so that's how you can get heart failure and strokes occurring so primary hypertension there's two types primary hypertension is what we call an idiopathic disease so there's no underlying cause that's what idiopathic means uh, so there's no underlying cause uh, has been identified uh, this cannot be cured it can only be you know regulated there most of the cases, 90% of the cases are, are primary hypertension. There are factors involved here. Uh, one is diet. If you have a high sodium diet, high in saturated fats and cholesterol, that's gonna increase your blood pressure. Uh, another is obesity. You just have more blood tubes there. Uh, so, you know, that's gonna increase your blood pressure. Age, uh, for most people, it appears after 40. And why this is, is because uh, just like every other tissue on our body, uh, your blood vessels become less elastic. So they don't stretch as much each time your heart beats, okay? Less elasticity, um, uh, so that's gonna increase your blood pressure. Race, it's more common in African Americans. Uh, heredity, so if your parents have high blood pressure, your chances of getting it are higher. Uh, stress, so if you live in a stressful environment, uh, whether it's work, home, whatever it is, uh, you're going to be under stress a lot. That's going to cause you to decrease the stress hormones, which mostly are vasoconstrictors. Uh, smoking also increases your chance of hypertension as well. Secondary hypertension. Uh, this is only 10% of the cases, and this is due to identifiable disorder. So like you got a pinched blood vessel somewhere in your body. Okay, let's look at uh, circulatory shock. Circulatory shock is any state in which cardiac output is insufficient to meet the body's metabolic needs. There's a variety of shocks here, so we're going to go through those. The first is cardiogenic shock. This is shock caused by an inadequate pumping of the heart. And this is usually due to a myocardial infarction. So, uh, you know, you're having a heart attack, uh, so your blood, heart isn't pumping properly. So your heart, you know, by your heart not pumping properly, you're not getting blood flow back to the tissues of the heart. Next is low venous return shock. And so here your cardiac output is low because too little blood is returning to the heart. So there's a few types of this. One is hypovolemic shock. This is a loss of blood volume as a result of uh, blood or water loss. So, you know, like you got a cut or a hemorrhage or a burn or something like that, dehydration, you just lost some blood or fluids in you and now your blood volume is pretty low. So this is the most common form of low venous return shock. Next is obstructed uh, venous return shock. So this is a compression of, of a vein that impedes blood flow. This is from an aneurysm or a growing tumor can do this, just shuts off that uh, blood flow through that blood vessel. Next is venous pooling, also known as vascular shock. Here, too much blood accumulates in the limbs. Uh, so some people, you know, standing for long periods of time could lock their limbs, and this is gonna uh, uh, cause the blood to pool in their limbs. Uh, and then because of that, they're getting less blood flow to their heart, and they can pass out because of this. Uh, this is also why pilots typically, you know, uh, fighter pilots uh, typically wear compression suits, because if you're making turns at um, high speeds, this can cause blood to pool uh, into your limbs and then not make it to your heart. And because of that, you could pass out, which is a really bad thing to do if you're moving at high speeds. All right, let's look at other types of shock. Uh, one is septic shock, and this is where bacterial toxins trigger vasodilation and increase capillary permeability. Uh, so, uh, so increased vasodilation, increased capillary permeability. So blood flows out of your capillaries into the tissues. So your blood volume goes down because of that. Uh, so once again, you're not getting enough blood flow through your body to meet your metabolic needs. Next is anaphylactic shock. Uh, and this is due to exposure to an antigen to which a person is allergic, like a peanut allergy, right? Uh, so this causes the release of histamine, uh, which leads to vasodilation and increased capillary permeability. Once again, uh, not enough blood is returning back to the heart to get to the brain. 
Uh, so let's look at the responses of shock. Uh, one is compensated shock. This is a recovery homeostatic interaction. So here, hypotension, uh, so hypotension, so low blood pressure, triggers the barrel reflex in production of angiotensin II, uh, which is a vasoconstrictor, uh, or the person faints and gravity restores uh, the blood to the brain. Okay, uh, next is decompensated shock. Uh, so if compensated shock doesn't work, uh, you get into several life-threatening positive feedback uh, mechanisms or positive feedback loops. So none of these are good. So you get poor cardiac output, uh, which leads to myocardial ischemia and then infarction. So because the blood, uh, the tissues of your heart aren't getting enough oxygen, uh, they start to die. That's what the infarction is. And so that leads to less output, which means that you get less cardiac output, uh, which means there's less blood flow to those tissues and so on. Uh, slow circulation can lead to a blood clot formation. Uh, that's one of the things, so that slows the venous return. Uh, this leads in turn to uh, further vasodilation and a drop of blood pressure in cardiac output because what you're doing is you're trying to open up those blood vessels even more so that clot won't affect it, uh, but that lowers your blood pressure even more and so your cardiac output decreases and this usually leads to heart failure or uh, brain failure. 